Awesome. All right, guys, this is the 21 Convention 2010 of Stockholm, Sweden. I'm Anthony Dream Johnson. I want to welcome everyone here to Sweden. Uh, give you guys yourselves a hand, too. This is a long way off, man. We're a couple thousand miles from Orlando. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I'm glad you guys made it out here. It's a long way. Uh, it was for me, too. Long flight, fun flight, fun city. Uh, again, my name is Anthony Dream Johnson. I'm sure everyone knows that by now. 21. I currently live in Orlando, Florida. My, uh, my dream, though, is this coming year is to travel, so I might not live there too much longer. Uh, by the way, before I talk too much about myself, where is everyone from, the countries and things like that? Because we knew this in Orlando, we always have a few, but it's always like Canada or something like that. Like it's kind of kind of a country, but what is a country? But so close. Like where you're from? Yeah, you're from Sweden. Yeah, of course. Yeah, northern Sweden. Yeah, cool. Where are you from, man? Costa Rica. Costa Rica. That's a long way, man. That's good. That's awesome. That's, a, that's farther than me, man. Uh, Scotland, I think you said. It's badass, dude. I'm Irish. That's close, right? <laughs> My geography is horrible, typical American. Uh, who else is, um, raise your hand if you're from uh, England. Who's from England here? A couple of you guys, fantastic. Uh, anywhere else interesting around Europe? I'm just really curious. Everyone else here is from Sweden, really? Yeah. Awesome, oh, Norway, dude, I'm Norwegian. Yeah, yeah, awesome, dude. I'm like quarter Norwegian, so. My name, the surname was uh, Ingebrigtsen. I guess it's pretty Norwegian. Pretty Norwegian, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So we have a pretty international convention going here. It's awesome, loving it. But uh, moving on, I'm not here to ramble about you, to you guys about the convention and uh, what countries you're from for the next hour. It's like it's not that cool. It get uh, it get old pretty fast. I'd actually though before I get into my the title of my speech and like the actual subject uh, matter, so to speak, I want to ask you guys uh, like why why are we here? Why do you think we're here? Not necessarily like the esoteric one. I, I think the answer to that would be like, we're here because we want to learn how to live. That's the question, uh, the answer I seem to come up with. When I talk to guys, when they ask me questions at the convention, when people ask me questions about anything, it just comes in and it, I hear it as like, you know, I want to learn how to live. That's awesome. That's why I'm here, to learn how to live. It's my pur one of my purposes in life. But why Sweden? You know, we, we started this convention in Orlando uh, three years ago, four conventions ago. So does anyone, you know, the guess is like why we're here? Anybody? Anybody? Just because it's Stockholm, hot babes? Svenska flickas? Flickoros? I always screw up the plural and singular. I don't, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I think we're here. I believe we're here because this convention is meant to help people and it's meant to change the course of a generation. To do that, we have to do remarkable things. And this is one of them. The first remarkable thing we do is put the footage out for free, which makes it mega, mega popular, thanks to, in part, our Jonas, our tech guy who's here. So that's awesome. I think it's a huge part of what's going to help make it have any chance, any legit chance of making an impact on an entire generation. And I really believe it's meant to do that. So that's remarkable thing number one. Remarkable thing number two, and this is more so why we're here in Sweden, is we're the first conference for men, as far as I know, to ever host it, both in North America and Europe, back to back. So again, give yourselves, give you guys yourselves a round of applause for uh, making it out here, especially for Danny, who made it from Florida. So, bam, yeah. So, so enough about the convention, all that fun stuff, the remarkable things we do. Again, I'm not here to ramble to you about the convention. I'm actually more to talk to you about a specific subject that I've had a very interesting experience with over about the past eight weeks, and especially the past four weeks. The title of my speech is Becoming a Stronger Person. Uh, how I did it and the key elements I see on how to do that in your own life. Uh, and also how a dream became a reality. Literally, us sitting here in this room, this was a dream of mine once and we're here now, it's amazing to me. I'm still having trouble like processing it. I'm like, I'm in, I'm in Sweden doing this? Like, I always thought I might be in Orlando, but like <laughs> Stockholm, really? So that's really cool. And uh, also, a part of my speech today is gonna be discussing the most severe test I've ever been through in my life, which was the past four month, four weeks when I toured Europe speaking uh, about this convention in Stockholm, Gothenburg, Amsterdam, Munich, Vienna, all these places uh, touring Europe. I never thought I'd do that. And that was a very, very strenuous time for me these past four weeks, but I think it turned out really well, and I'm very glad I did it. So the title of the speech is Becoming a Stronger Person. And the four key elements is what we're going to kind of discuss and then go throughout the entire speech 
discussing. The first element that I found about, and this isn't necessarily an element of a strong person, it's more of an element of how to become a stronger person. So it's more of like about the journey and the process and like some arbitrary concept that we put together for like a strong person, whatever that means to you. So again, it's more about the process and then the end result being unique to you. The first element that I see is you have to do your own thinking. You've got to be an independent thinker if you want to become a strong person. It's, it's just a massive, massive part of it. And it's the number one element that I see in it. The second element, and we'll get more to these as we go along. The second element is you have to drop the ambiguity you see in your own life. So when you spot it, you just got to discard it as fast as you can, like immediately. Second element, becoming a stronger person. Third element, becoming a stronger person. You've got to be willing to sacrifice everything for something you believe in. Obviously, you have to know, you have to find that thing first. But once you do, you've got to be willing to sacrifice everything for it. And the key part of that, too, is willing. You don't necessarily have to do that, but if you're willing to, that's the important part of it. And so you may or may not necessarily have to sacrifice everything. We'll get more into it. The fourth element, and this sounds a little bit... Uh, I don't want to say woo-woo, but a little more esoteric, I think is the word. And that is you have to find peace in your heart and rise to the challenge of massive, massive uncertainty when it comes your way. You shouldn't have it nonstop. That's just like not, that's artificial, it's not natural. But when you, when it, you do face it, you've got to be able to step up and rise up. And if you can do these four things, especially the fourth one, the first one, I think that's going to really skyrocket your, the process of you becoming a stronger person. And not just like one area of your life, like women or school, academics, career, whatever, but I mean like the whole thing, like the foundation, the pillars supporting you as a person in every endeavor you take on, every action you take. So the first thing, like I said, is to do your own thinking. Become an independent thinker, whatever you want to call it. So how do you do this? How do you go about becoming a critical thinker, an independent thinker? One way I've found is to, and this isn't always the answer, but for a lot of times for my personality it is, I have to isolate myself. So about eight weeks ago when the convention here, about eight weeks ago I realized the convention here was lagging in ticket sales. And I, it finally, it kind of hit me like all once. Like I saw the tickets sell throughout the year and it was a pretty good amount. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, this event is like in June. You know, we've X, t X tickets sold. We need to sell more fast. And then I started kind of freaking out. I was kind of getting scared. I was like, what, what am I going to do? Like I, I want to do this, but I was like, man, there's a lot at stake here. It's not as simple as like just, you know, plow through it and like, you know, promote the hell out of it and like push tickets because there's a lot of risk. If I messed up financially with this event, it could hurt the Orlando event and uh, everything like that. So it's, it was really important to me. I was like, I got to make a decision. So I actually started to isolate myself. When I started feeling that stress from the, the, the possibility of this event not happening, I started going for walks a lot more, which I, I say I do, but I didn't enough. But when this started happening, that stress, I, I started going for walk, like walks a lot more. I uh, went for drives by myself. I just kind of, you know, I got alone. Like I got into my head so I could kind of figure out you know, what I want to do with my life and like what I want to do with this entire c convention over here. If I even wanted to still do it, because it was a, uh, I knew there was going to be a, a very tough journey ahead. So I think if you can isolate yourself, that's a huge part of becoming an independent thinker. You just got to like get that noise out of your head, make kind of quiet it down and think real clearly and just get even other people too that want to help you. You just got to be like, you know what, hang on a second. I got to figure this out for myself. Really important. And the point too of, there's a point to isolating it. Not only becoming an independent thinker, but when you can, when you do that through isolation for a temporary period of, a short period of time, you, and this is what I ended up doing, is you boil it down to something very actionable in action. So for me, you know, I quieted down, you know, all that stress in my head. I kind of got everyone out of my life for just like a few, a few days, maybe a week or so. And I was like, all right, what do I need to do with this event? And I decided, I was like, you know what, I'm going to do this, whatever it takes, more or less. If you read my blog, actually, you can see by the time I was like writing about it. And I was like, yeah, guys, uh, I'm, I'm freaking out. But you know what? If we move X tickets by this date, then we'll do it. And if not, we'll just, you know, not do it. But I knew in the back of my head at the time, I was like, that's nonsense. Like, I'm not going to do that. 
And I knew that, but I couldn't tell myself that yet. I wasn't there yet, but I was close. So deep down, I said I was going to do it at that time when I boiled everything down to that action. And then two weeks later is when it really hit me, when I decided to come to Europe really early and do this event and bang it out. Another thing, too, is you should, I got some extremes from friends I had about, you know, advice on doing this event. So I had guys tell me, like, yeah, you shouldn't do it, man, too much of a risk financially, you're going you're gonna to lose your ass, you shouldn't do it, man, focus on the United States, do it in California. Just kidding. Yeah, people really have told me to do that. They think I should mention in New York and California, maybe, but I, we already have a guy doing it over there, some, some like it, called PUA Summit, it's a great event. And uh, I, just, I don't see like the potential for the event there yet. I saw it in Europe is where I saw it. So I had people tell me not to do it. And then other people, other friends that were like, yeah, man, just do it, man. You can do it. You're the dream, baby. And I'm like, really? Like, it's not that simple right now. Like, it's kind of a gray matter. I mean, eventually, you know, I went through that and made a decision through isolation. But I listened to those extremes, and it gave me, like, perspective on where I wanted to find where my answer was at, which was kind of, I mean, I ended up just doing it at all costs, but really it was more in the middle. It was like, all right, I got to do this at all costs, but I can't just be an idiot about it. Like when I started this convention, it happened through like sheer like force. I was like, I want to do this, and everyone wants to do it with me, and I'm going to do it. And I worked my ass off and made it happen, which is what I did, did again here too. We all made it happen, like the past four weeks especially, um, and bust some ass around Europe. But I couldn't do that same thing again. I knew I had to be a little bit more <laughs> clever or more effective. So no longer was it just like, pile drive my way to Sweden. It was like pile drive my way like really fast and like weave through all these jagged rocks and like obstacles along the way. So not sheer force. My answer is in the middle. Well, I guess it leaned a little bit to just fucking do it. That's how I am. It's personality. Crazy. Another idea too that I'm going to get more to in a second is that by becoming an independent thinker, you don't just, disc I used to think this way, you just discard everything. It's like, oh, think for yourself? Everyone else can go screw themselves, man. I know what's up. I'm the man. I think for myself. Dude, not cool. Like I said, you listen to the extremes to get perspectives, like that, those points in the end of the spectrum. Uh, at the same time, like that's, like I made that decision that was somewhere in the middle because I was thinking for myself. I became the filter of all that noise from all these people on extremes, people in the middle, you know, people that had, uh, invested interest in the event, people that didn't. So all these different people, all this different advice, it came down to me thinking for myself and filtering all that stuff. That's what being a critical thinker is all about, is being the filter, rather than blindly accepting what someone tells you or doing the opposing thing to that, which would be just discarding everything like an arrogant prick, which I've done in the past. I no, I no longer do that. <laughs> so that's element number one, do your own thinking for becoming a stronger person. Massively important, foundational. I brought about 50 note cards to Europe, by the way. And in my speaking tour around Europe, I did so many speeches, I used them all up. So I'm down to a friggin' little notepad thing. But it works. It works. It's good. The second element to becoming a stronger person, which we'll talk more about in a second, well, it'll tie into element one and element three, is dropping the ambiguity. So like I said, uh, I was like, when I was writing on my blog, Jonas, a couple people read my blog, I was writing on my blog when I figured out this event might not happen. I was still kind of like shaky about it. I was like, oh, what, what, you know, I want to do this, but we need to sell X tickets by this date. And that's, on the surface level, that's really what I was thinking. On the deep down, that was nonsense. But nevertheless, that's how I was acting on the outside. And that at the time, I think, is why it didn't even pick up even more steam at that time. Because I hadn't yet just shed that ambiguity in myself, that weakness. I was like, man, I, I don't know. It's uh, just a weak move. I was like, no, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I said it was rambling, forget it. The point though, element two is drop the ambiguity. And I'm going to talk about how to do that. <coughs> well, you drop the ambiguity by, like I said, combining element one and element three. So element one is doing your own thinking. Element three is being willing to sacrifice everything for something you believe in. So when I was thinking for myself from those extremes, those that, you know, don't do it at all, you're crazy, you know, you shouldn't do it. In so many different ways, too. It wasn't always like 
that abrasive route. Some of my friends were like, dude, you shouldn't do it, man. It was almost like that underhand, like, uh, no, it's cool, man. Just should be all right. Don't do it. Do it in Orlando. Take the safe route, man. No, nah, that's, that's not the personality. The opposite end of the spectrum, too, though, uh, well, I already told you guys that. So I came to the middle, and when I finally dropped that ambiguity, it was because when, that, when I shed that ambiguity, if you saw my blog, it was because I was like, you know what? I believe in this convention. I believe it helps people, individuals, and I believe it has the ability to help the collective, too, on a massive scale. I was like, that's what I believe in, and that's what I'm almost sac willing to sacrifice anything for. There's actually a friend of mine named Steve Maeda, or El Topo, as you guys know him. And when he said that about me in an interview we did of him, that really hit home. And I haven't forgot it, and I probably never will. Because I really do believe in this event. And man, when I, when I decided on that, when it became clear to me that that's how I felt deep down, and that I was like, you know what, there's a, there's a filter I need to put here to find that answer for this convention, that's how I dropped that ambiguity. So if you f ever feel the weakness in your own life, get really clear on what you, what you believe in and what you're willing to sacrifice for willing but not necessarily going to and then be that filter and you'll drop that ambiguity so you come together in the middle from it or another way to say it too is that I forgot it <laughs> as far as finding out what you're willing to sacrifice everything for that's not the easiest question to answer. I can't tell you that. That's like asking me, like, why is the sky blue? It's just blue. So at the end of the day, though, it's a conscious choice you have to make. It's an, it's an action you have to take. And yeah, it's something you have to decide on your own. Isolation, though, like I said, for independent thinking can also help in this regard. Uh, you don't want to isolate yourself too much. I've done that in the past growing up. And that can have really, really devastating effects on your social life on your relationships, on your academics, on your mental well-being. I'm not even joking, man. If you isolate yourself too much, which I've done for months at a time before, and your interactions with people are very, uh, they have a lot of barriers in between them, man, you'll like lose your mind. So you can't overdo it, but if you can do it and you can get alone and you can really get to like, the core of what you want to do with your life and think, if you can just think and get that, all that BS noise out of your head, that, that like distortion, you'll probably find at some point, I think we all have it too, there's something you're meant to be doing with your life and you'll find it. And when you find it, you're gonna become a lot stronger person like automatically. Cause you're gonna say like, this is what I'm, I wanna do with my life and this is what I'm willing to sacrifice everything for. My assets, my, all of my time, like who knows what man. My health, my sleep, whatever. If, if you believe in it man, that's what counts. And the way to do that is through isolation again, temporarily. There could be other ways too. That again though seems to fit the way I've grown up and the personality I've somewhat created for myself. So if you find other ways too, uh, who knows what, man. It could be a million different things that help you find what you want to do with your life and what you want to sacrifice everything for. Key word again there, willing, not necessarily going to. Two different things there. So in that sense too, don't be eager to just like trash your life for something you believe in. You shouldn't necessarily always have to do that. I've done it, but you're not always going to have to. And don't be like eager and like, don't use that as a qualifier for something you believe in. It's like, oh, if I believe in this, then I have to like trash other parts of my life. Nonsense. You don't have to do that. It's total BS. But you got to be willing to do that. And when people see that in you, that's what people. That's what that's what brings people across the world to Sweden, to Stockholm. That's what brings like tens of thousands of historic sites every month. And that's what brings hundreds of people to Orlando too, in Florida is I think people see that I mean, They see that expressed through everything I do, or close to everything I do, from the documentary to the footage to the events, is that I, I know, they know that I'm willing to like, make what I want happen and what you know, we all want to happen together, no matter what it takes. And when you guys can find that in your own life, whatever it be, career, academics, relationships, who knows? It could be like saving pandas or something, <laughs> saving zebras. You never know. There's a quote I read in a book recently. And while this isn't an exact quote, it's not a butchering, but it's like a paraphrase. When you're willing to sacrifice everything for something you believe in, 
you're going to come to a point, and I did. And with this convention in Europe, it happened with staying at my friend Dayan's house, who's also speaking next. I, was, I got to Sweden, right, in Stockholm. That's a big reason I came here, obviously, was to promote the event and make this happen. But there came a point when I was doing all these things and I was pushing as hard as I could and as intelligently as I could, and like it wasn't working. And I was continuing to f kind of freak out. I was like, holy crap, man, it was really scary. And I tried all these things. I dumped a large amount of money in a PPC ad campaign. I contacted all the speakers to help promote the event. I did everything I knew how to do and then some. I used to go to sleep at 5 in the morning. The sun would be coming up in Stockholm. It'd already be up for two hours. It comes up at like 3 in the morning here. It's crazy. You come up from the club and it's coming up. <coughs> but there came a point, and this is where this quote comes in. Is when I, it's actually right two and a half weeks when I got to, I got to Stockholm May 10th, and it's two and a half weeks after I was here. And uh, long story short, I decided what I needed to do was a tour of Europe speaking. Like I told you guys, Stockholm, Gothenburg, Amsterdam, Munich, Vienna. When I decided to do that, that was when I broke the threshold that most people I think are going to, they don't pass. Not necessarily you're, they're going to fail out, but that's just where it ends up happening for a lot of people. And the quote from the, the book's The Alchemist, and the quote, and it more or less says, don't be the guy that dies of thirst just before the oasis, which literally is what that point was for me when I was here in Stockholm. Don't be the guy that dies of thirst just before you, like you're seeing the palm trees and you're in that desert, you're dying of thirst. Don't be that guy that's like right there and just, just falls apart. Because that's, that's, that, that point came to me. I was really like, getting, I was terrified, man. This event wouldn't happen financially. The, the cost of doing this across the world, I'm not going to lie, pretty high. But I came to that point and I was like, man, if I, can just, if I can just hold on to that same courage that we all have, the same amount of, if I can hold on to it for a little bit longer, I'm going to get to that oasis, and I got to it. And that oasis ended up being that tour of Europe. It was pretty hectic, too, and pretty stressful, but really fun. And I did that, and I think it helped this event massively, if not actually indirectly, because the costs of flying around Europe, they're not too expensive, but uh, we only moved so many tickets. So I think actually the bigger point of doing that tour of Europe, too, when I found that, that oasis in the desert, is that it was another expression of, like, I was willing to do anything to make this event happen. So people saw that online, they saw it on my blog, they saw it on the site when I told them. I had this actually, this map I made at like 5 in the morning in Gothenburg, the airport, with like a trackpad on paint. It was really crappy. But I was just so tired, I was like, I, I gotta tell you guys what I'm doing. I'm at the end of my ropes, I'm so scared. Uh. But I think when people saw that, people do. When I wrote that, people donated, people donated money, people bought all these things to help support the event because they knew I was struggling to make this happen. But when they saw that express, that strength, they're like, man, like it's like you know you can do that and when you see someone else doing it you want to support them because then you like you receive that back it's like a mirror almost I get that too with guys like one of my favorite guys I like to support is Tim Ferriss uh, I have his book I gotta get the other one too now the Becoming Superhuman is coming out and all those things so you see that strength in him for example who's a fan of Tim Ferriss by the way yeah I figure, figure as much <laughs> awesome guy I think too that's why he's become he's a, he's a strong guy man I don't think people see that in him, and that's why it's really clearly expressed. So not only is he a strong person, he's become a strong person, but people, it's reflected really clearly in him. And when people see that, they support him massively because you get that back. It's like reflected 100% or even more back at you. Uh, so in the same sense of people supporting this convention when I wrote about that and they saw that strength, when I was just like, you know what, man, I'm making this happen no matter what. I'll sell like my shoes to make this happen. <laughs> I'll walk barefoot through Stockholm with Svenska Flickas. People saw that, just like you see it in guys like Tim or who knows. And when you, when you support that, you get it back too, which I think is a huge reason why that happened. People saw that expressed so clearly in me when at 5 in the morning in Gothenburg Airport on a dying laptop. I've been on this third key element for a while. We've got to move on to the fourth one so we can get Dayan, the man up here. The fourth element, again, this sounds a little bit woo-woo, I call it, spiritual, but I'm dead serious. And it's you've got to find peace in your heart, and then you've got to be able to deal with that massive uncertainty. So I had all this stress, right, from, you know, like, you know, the event almost was not going to happen financially. It was a lot of expenses. And I had that stress when I was in Stockholm, and every night I'd be up, I'd get no sleep, partly because of working, partly because the sun was up and I couldn't go to sleep. But... All that stress, all that noise, 
It's like I shook my head up so much and I allowed that noise to come back during, when I was in Stockholm. It got so freaking loud, it like made me deaf all of a sudden. And I was like, man, all this stress, I'm gonna let this feed me being relaxed and getting clear on what I need to do, which ended up being the tour of Europe. Goth Stockholm, Gothenburg, Amsterdam, Munich, Vienna. So in that sense, if you can find that peace in your heart, for me, for me, the way I did it was through that, that massive amount of anxiety I felt. That's not a good feeling, but it's not necessarily... Anxiety, for example, I felt isn't an inherently bad feeling, but it didn't feel good. But you know what? When I allowed that to feed into what I wanted to do, that's another thing that gave me a lot of strength. All of a sudden, to be like, you know what? This is scary as shit, but I'm going to do this tour. I'm going to make this convention happen. So find that peace in your heart and let that massive amount of uncertainty that's, I'm sorry to tell you guys, going to come with the territory of becoming a strong person in any way, shape, or form, whatever way is unique to you. It comes with the territory, this massive uncertainty, especially for live events, let me tell you. But uh, if you can let that feed into, finding like that peace and relaxing and getting clear on what you need to do, that's like, number four, this element's huge and number one. So, very important. <coughs> The stepping up too, I got a question in Amsterdam when someone, I talked about, not this exactly, but it was a very similar event in my life where I just, I just all of a sudden stepped up. It was actually after the 2008 convention in Orlando where I lost a lot of money with the filming. We had too many cameras, too much camera work. Uh, we had like 70 guys, but there was like 130 RSVPs and we collected money at the door instead of online. So we were like way short of funds. So that was a really rough time in my life too, and I talked about that. My best friend also had that time. That was in uh, 2008. I talked about that in Amsterdam, and then I talked about how right after that really traumatic time, a friend died, finances were on the floor, probably somewhere a couple feet below the floor. I talked about how I stepped up after that, and that became like the really the big change in my life, where you saw me change as a person from like kid to like, I don't know if you call it man, but you saw me grow up really fast, all of a sudden, because these really traumatic events. And when I talked about that, his question was like, how'd you step up? Which you might be asking yourself now too. It's like, how did I get to this really traumatic, this really anxious point, this really stressful point, and how did I step up? Like I said a minute ago, it was a conscious choice. I've told you about the ways it happened to me with the noise and isolation and all these things. But ultimately, the same thing with you guys, anyone, in the, everyone on this planet, let alone this room, it's a conscious choice you have to make that everyone can make. It can be with women too, like growing up, I was, as I've talked about elsewhere in the previous conventions, growing up I was very, very horrible with social skills, women, everything like that. But you know what? I always had the choice to be better with women, to, to be sociable, to, sociable, to relate to people, to do all these things and communicate clearly. You always had that choice. We've always had that choice. You just have to let the experience catch up and eventually you'll be able to, you'll see and you can make that choice which is how I made it. It always, it always comes down to, to yourself, to me, to you, whoever, for that big choice in your life. So it's the same thing again too with, uh, you can't ask people like, how did, you do, how did you do that massive thing in your life? And they can tell you all these things like I've just told you, but ultimately it comes down to you. So if you ever have in your life like that really hard point where you're like, holy crap, man, I don't know, if I'm just really scared right now. Just remember, it comes down to you. Not only does it come down to you, that, that's where it ends up, it can only come down to you. So again, like with the woman example, like becoming more successful with women, dude, you can, we have all these coaches coming in, all these speakers flying in from around the world. They can help you massively get better with women, right? But you know what? At the end of the day, it's gonna be all you guys helping yourselves. So they can help you, they can talk you through all these things, give you all these ideas, and you can filter out, become that independent thinker. That's cool. You can be, good to see you, man. Hey, mate, what's up? Yeah, so you can, it's all good. Yep. So you can do that, but ultimately, again, it's just going to come down to you every single time. There isn't an option. You, you, can, have the, you can have Tony Robbins coaching you 24-7, be a personal assistant, right? It doesn't matter. It's going to come down to you. People can't make choices for you. Well, they can, but that's not good. <laughs> You've got to make your own. And when you do that, man, that's another thing, too. It's like it's, it's cyclical. 
The more choices you make for yourself and the stronger you become as a person, it just compounds upon itself. People ask me, like, they always ask me, like, dude, how do you do this convention? How? They see it on the internet, and it's, like, mystical to them. It's like, how, how do you do this? It's like, man, this is what I want to do, and I just figured out as I go along, like, life. God, it's not like, it's not like Dayan. <laughs> yeah, but I'm dead serious. It's always going to come down to you, and not only is that the way it just turns out, but it's the way it's meant to be, and it, it really it can only be that way. So if you get these four elements down, you become a stronger person. Just to reiterate again, too, you need to be an independent thinker. You've got to drop the ambiguity, which I totally stole from Jason Savage. Definitely, 2009 speaker. Indep become an independent thinker, critical thinker, or think for yourself, however you, want to, however you want to label it. Drop the ambiguity. Be willing to sacrifice. Find that thing you believe in, and then be willing to sacrifice everything for it. That's the third element. And again, that key word is willing. When you're willing, people are going to see it. You can't hide that. You couldn't hide it if you tried. I couldn't hide how I feel about this event if I tried. I, I could wear like, who knows what I could do to try to hide it. And it wouldn't work. You guys would see that. Or it would be really, it would be impressively difficult to hide it. Because I'm a total nut job like that. And if you hang out with me in person, you'll see that. And the fourth element is you've got to find that peace in your heart. And you've got to be willing to deal with the massive uncertainty that comes with every so often is part it's a part of everyone's path. You're gonna you're gonna come to that point in your life. Uncertainty. It's just part of becoming a stronger person. It's unavoidable. It's not a bad thing. Even if it makes you feel like total crap, it may, it causes you to become to feel depressed, anxious, uh, your life just falls apart, you get no sleep for two months. You you wait you stay up every night for two hours staring at the ceiling, freaking out about something that turned out pretty good, pretty awesome. We're in Stockholm, Svenska Flick is everywhere. So yeah, and again, let that, that fourth one too, it's important to let that, when you come to that point, when you're seeing the oasis and you're thinking about quitting and whatever you're doing, it's important to let that feed it. All that, those negative emotions, we just want to label as inherently bad, nonsense. Use that. Let that feed into what you want to do and then be expressed so people can support you. Because when you truly want something, man, and I stole this from The Alchemist, awesome book, but it's so real. When you truly want something, the world will conspire to help you which I think is exactly what's happened with this convention over the past three years, four events now, in Europe, in Orlando, online, everywhere. Jonas is a guy, again, who does her web work, and he does it like for free because he believes in the event, which I can't even tell you like how invaluable it is because he's like so awesome with it. And I can't do everything, and neither can anyone else. But he's awesome. And again, man, like this event too, I got more help during these past four weeks when I was in, St in Sweden and Europe and other parts of Europe. I got more help than I ever had before in my life to make this event happen because I believed in what I was doing and people saw that. And when you truly want something, I swear to God, people conspire to help you, man. And if you don't, they might conspire against you. So believe in what you're doing. It's important, a little paradox there. Some of you might be wondering, a lot of people come to this event because it focuses especially in Europe for the time being, uh, success with women and stuff like that. So how does this relate? Well, it directly relates, I'm sure you can kind of connect the dots on how it directly relates to success with women and going through a journey where you go from someone who can't talk to girls, someone who can, or even forget girls. I couldn't talk to people, which I think is a, a problem for a lot of guys in the pickup community, so to speak. They just can't even talk to people, let alone girls. To relate all this, this foundational pillar stuff, you should let that be a continuous like journey underneath surface level journeys that you take throughout your life. So the, the, st the four elements I was talking about, about becoming a stronger person, you need to let that support and feed into journeys that are more specific. So with women, for example, I, uh, I went through a couple years of just torture trying to learn how to talk to girls. I basically crammed 17 years there were 17 years in my life where I should have had social experience, and I basically didn't have any. So I crammed 17 years of, of lack into two years of going out to bars and clubs and meeting girls. I just did that all at once. And it was a really traumatic you know, part of my life and all that, and it was that surface level journey that things like that, things like I've just talked about, those four elements, they came into being and they, 
that began to support that journey. And you know what? I didn't complete that journey, so to speak, and I never will. I don't think we're supposed to. But I got my ability to talk to people and women in my life handled to the point where it was no longer a dark cloud following me around like in Winnie the Pooh or something like that, or whatever other cartoon uses that. So that's a service level journey that you can use these to feed into and support. So women is one, and I recommend everyone watching this or here, I think everyone here has probably already done that, started, you start with women. As, I think as a man, that is like the number one thing you need to like get off your mind as, a, again, the dark cloud thing. So you've got to focus on that first, and eventually you're going to come to a point. For me, it was just my ability just to talk to people and girls. That was the point where I was like, all right, I'm not done with this, but I got it handled, so to speak. William, when you get a chance to, can you give me my backpack from under the table? I'm going to need something in a minute. The whole thing. So start out with women. I think you're the best event in the world for this. There's other events, too. They're pretty awesome. Peewee Summit. Shout out. Awesome events. And the 21 convention in Orlando, Florida. It's next month. You guys want to make it out. Danny will be there. A couple other guys here will be there. So you, you have these events. You have this help. And really, as a guy, it's super important, man. You need to get that, that handled. Thanks. I got it. All my stuff. Backpacker. Vagabond. So start out with that, and then right after that, I'm going to recommend you move on to your health. I think is if you have, if the most human thing you can do is socialize or have sex, you can kind of combine the two. Like that's, we're social animals, right? That's the most human thing you can do. So you've got to get that handled to the point where it's no longer a dark cloud. Again, though, you're never going to be done with it. You've got to continue. The second one, though, I think, Right behind that, as a human being, you need to get your health handled. Which, we didn't fly anyone in here, but if you go to Orlando and you watch the footage online, we're going to have some of the best guys in the world speaking in Orlando, Florida, on how to exercise, on how to eat, on your lifestyle, on sleep, on how to sleep, on like how to work out. Man, everything, everything you can imagine. Like, I'm not really good at describing these things, even though I love them. I'm more of a very long-winded, so it takes me forever. If you ever read my blog, The Dream Lounge, you'll see that. But yeah, start out as a guy, getting that part of your life handled with women, being able to talk. And then move on, I recommend, as your next journey, which well, should be almost a mirror image. It was for me as uh, my journey with women and learning how to talk to people. Get The next area of life you should focus on is health, nutrition, exercise, fitness, any one of these words that we, as a society, never seem to take the time to define. If you actually try to define exercise, it would be interesting because you never find something really concrete. To do that, so Adam brings his backpack up. Here we go. I have my four favorite books. As far as the, uh, we can pass these around too if you guys want, but they're day on. No, never mind. <laughs> okay. I own these books too. This is, in my opinion, the number one book. It's the number one book I've ever seen on how to eat and have like a healthy lifestyle, nutrition, anything you want to call it, diet. It's an amazing book. The author, Mark Sisson, the guy on the front, is coming to Orlando. A uh, pretty famous guy, so kudos to myself. Awesome, though. i got to buy him a flight. i got to buy him a flight. He's a really good guy, though. I've talked to him on the phone. Ironically, the uh, first thing he asked me, he's like, he called me. He's like, hey, so, uh, Anthony, i got to ask you, is this like a how to get laid convention? Or? And I'm like, nah, man, hell no. And it's not. Of course not. I've talked about this relentlessly on the Internet in the past years, too. It's become a lot more than that. First thing you ask me. So the Primal Blueprint. You can Google the, uh, the review of this, the Primal Blueprint review, or Primal Blueprint review, and you'll pull up my blog, actually. I can put a review of it. I don't know how. I beat Amazon. I, I don't know why. Uh, but it's an amazing book. I wrote a full review of it. It's one of the few books I've taken the time to hardcore review. Awesome book. Highly recommend it. He also has a blog, uh, marksdeliapple.com. Highly recommend that. It's got like a bajillion posts on it. Amazing book. So that's nutrition and lifestyle. The second book I highly recommend for getting the health of your life handled is Body by Science. Awesome, awesome book. This, to me, is the definitive book on exercise, period. Like, I've never seen something better written. Not in the past, nothing more concise, nothing more condensed, nothing more logical, nothing more well-written. It's like, it's not the be-all, end-all, but it's pretty damn close. Awesome book. Uh, Doug McGuff, actually, the author, just filmed two reality series with Tony Robbins. Uh, part of it's coming out July 27th, right after the convention. 
And uh, of course, I'm, uh, I'm a huge fan of the book, and Doug McGuff will be in Orlando, Florida at the 21 convention currently as I speak. Awesome book. Uh, obviously, watch his footage for free on 21convention.com. Sick book. Sick book. Awesome guy. And he's also, too, <clears throat> he is like the man in exercise. Medical doctor. He's been a personal trainer for over a decade, I want to say. He owns his own gym. But you know what, too? If you read his blog, bodybyscience.net, and you go through and you find his comments, I swear to God, that guy's like one of the smartest people on the planet. Very wise guy, very underrated. Not only with exercise, but I mean, just as like a, a really wise human being that needs to write a book on like how to live your life. Awesome guy, Doug McGuff. Okay, so those are the two books for that. That area of life. As far as the getting women handled area of life, we got like the best guys in the world coming here and Orlando and on the website, 20th So you have a million books for that or speeches for that content, a lot of content. The number one book too that I don't have for that area of life I recommend is called The Way of the Superior Man. I have a copy back in Orlando, but God, that's an amazing book. I invited David Dita to speak. Uh, he was going to, but he's on a writing sabbatical, so it didn't work out. I guess that's where you just write forever and you just, you isolate yourself, right? That's what it is, right? Yeah. So you can't come. But man, that book's amazing. The Way of the Superior Man. We pimped out a convention at the convention every year. We probably sold like you know a billion copies. But keep buying it. It's an amazing book. Uh, there's no way I can get commissioned for it. I, I don't care. Uh, awesome book. Seriously, awesome. The Way of the Superior Man. Buy the book immediately if you haven't read it. It's, it's not pushed hard enough, despite being pushed more than like any other book for men that I've ever seen. The other two books that these would relate more to the first, those key elements I talked about, about becoming a stronger person. The first one is called Meditations, or The Emperor's Handbook is another edition of it. Meditations uh, by Marcus Aurelius, Emperor of Rome. This guy was an awesome, awesome guy. There's different translations. This is the one I have. I got it from a guy named Ryan that I found. He wrote a post on Tim Ferriss' blog. Awesome guy. He's like our age, 21, something like that. Awesome book, Meditations, super cheap. Uh, it's just filled with wisdom, man. <laughs> if you ever like, if you ever like, need to find that mirror, like I said, Tim Ferriss earlier. There's another guy too that's like obviously died a long time ago, but God, this guy was an intelligent guy. <laughs> Read this book, Meditations. The final book that will relate to the first four elements of becoming a stronger person is the book I quoted a little bit, The Alchemist, which I got the idea from Dayan. Uh, I I can't tell you. <laughs> I can, like meditations almost, like I can't even describe it. I just finished reading it, so I'm still processing it, but amazing, amazing book. Once you got in, once I got into it, after the first few chapters, I was just like, this book is like incredible. Uh, another, I don't even know how to say his last name, Paulo Coelho? Coelho. Coelho, yeah. Amazing, amazing book uh, about just the journey we go on as human beings. I, it's really underrated. I never heard of it before. Dayan told me, but God, awesome book. Just like meditations. Amazing book. <laughs> and that's more or less my speech for the opening of this convention. I could take more time and just ramble on about how much I love it. I think you guys get the point though, and I write enough on the website about it, and my blog, and I spam you on Facebook, uh, all these things, so you get that idea. If you want to, I'm very personable. I'll talk to everyone here, and I will throughout the next three days. I'm very one-on-one. -on -one. <clears throat> so if you want to know more about it, the history, the everything like that, that I could just go so much of it, so many years now, long history, a lot to talk about, and I'm here on the side, but I'm not going to take time on stage away from day on to do that. So that's the end of my speech. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I wish I had even more time to prepare it and condense it, but shit happens and I was really really busy preparing for this event. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, that's it. So thanks guys. Oh, uh, before we take a break, before Dion speaks, does anyone have any questions or anything like that? What was the name of the tour group? The last one? Oh, he's going to get a mic for you. Yeah, it's not too big of a deal. Yeah. What was the name of the tour group? <laughs> yeah, well, I can just go anyway. The name he's asking, you're asking the name of the fourth book, right. The Alchemist. Yeah, I would just give you this copy if I had like five more at home.
I should have just bought a bunch of these and spammed them out because they're amazing. Awesome book. And I like this. It's one of the books too, like The Way of the Superior Man. I've read that book years ago and I still like, I haven't read it in like over a year now, but I've read it like four times. And man, like I just want to, I want to keep, whenever I get a chance, I should just keep buying that book and giving that to people. It's like, it's not a Bible, but man, it's like that book is awesome. Years after you read it, and this one too. This is not a book that's like, oh, I just read this book, I love it. And then a month later, you forget about it. It's like it changes your life. Uh, the way you pro, the, your worldview will like be changed by this book if you're ready for it. If not, come back a year later. Because I've done that too, books I've read, like I almost didn't read this book. First few chapters, I was like, oh, it's all right. Yeah, the answer was good. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I was like, holy crap, it's like crack. Uh, so it's amazing. Awesome book, The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. He has a bunch of other books too. Uh, I haven't read any of them yet. Maybe Dion has. So, next question. Anybody? No? No? Thanks, guys. Dion's up next.